Welcome to this week's edition of You Albany Overtime. I'm Donna Conrad. And I'm Trey Farkas. Now, we're joining you after a bit of a holiday layoff as holiday season is now upon us. But from us here at You Albany Overtime, we hope you enjoyed Thanksgiving and got the chance to think about what you're thankful for. Now, here at You Albany, we are especially thankful for our sports programs and the success they have had in the fall. Isn't that right, Donna? Of course, Troy. And now let's catch everybody up on our beloved U Albany sports teams. After winning the America East Tournament a few weeks ago, the Great Danes field hockey team ended their season in the first round of the NCAA Tournament. Now, the team took on Boston College, and although UAlbany was the higher seed, the team suffered a 2-1 loss to the Eagles. A silver lining, however, for the Great Danes is the team landed a program high of six players making the NFHCA All-Northeast Region team. Anna Botino, Paolo Heuser, and Jacqueline Hibbs were all named first team, Laura Page, Maxi Primus, and Fiori Van Ryswick were just named to second team. And we just got news that Paula has made the NFHCA Northeast Region Player of the Year for the second consecutive season. And stay tuned for more field hockey later as we'll talk to Paula in an exclusive interview. Yes, congrats to Paula. Now, unlike field hockey, the men's soccer team did not get the chance to play in the NCAAs. The top seeded Danes hosted Binghamton in the American East semis, but fell 1-0 to the Bearcats. Now, despite the upset, it was a very good season for head coach Trevor Gorman's team, who won the American East regular season title for the first time in program history. Now, let's take a look forward at next year. The good news is the team will only graduate five seniors. So that means the nucleus of the team, including striker of the year, Alfonso Pinero, in the conference, will return next fall. Now, after capturing their first ever American East Conference Championship, the women's team went out to Penn State where they would take on the one-seeded Nittany Lions. Now, the defense had a hard time keeping up with the fast-paced Lions who put up five unanswered goals. Now, despite the loss, this was the Danes winning a season in their D1 history. And now that the team has had some tournament experience, they'll look to come back next year, ready to be a top competitor in the America East and make another run for the title. Congratulations to senior Krista Fitzpatrick, who was honored with the COSIDA Division I Academic All-American. She is the first ever UAlbany women's soccer player to ever earn this honor. Now, Fitzpatrick currently has a 3.97 GPA, double majoring in criminology and sociology. She is one of 33 Division I women's soccer players to be selected for the honors. A 3.97, Donna, and a double major in criminology. That is one of the hardest majors at this school. That's incredible, playing soccer at the same time. It's as a well. big deal. I can't believe it. Now, going over to volleyball... If you're noticing a pattern here about stellar regular seasons and not so great postseasons, well, I'm sorry, but it continues with the volleyball team. The ladies, they fought in New Hampshire in a thrilling conference title match where the Danes eventually lost after four very close sets. UNH won the American East title for the third straight season, while Uolmi had its winningest season since 2011. Now, it's no consolation, but you all means Lady Leindecker and Amanda Dolan did earn spots on the America East All-Tournament team. With middle blocker Tatum Junction the only one graduating, the ladies should be back at it next season. Now, after a rough couple weeks, the UAlbany football team finished its season with a final record of 3-8. and eight. Coming off a win at Delaware, the Danes dropped their last home game to UNH by 10. Then they went on the road for their annual Empire Clash game against rival Stony Brook to compete for the first ever Golden Apple Trophy. But unfortunately, this year's trophy will remain on Long Island as the Seed Wolves would go on to win 20-2. to Now, Troy, the team's going to have to make some serious changes and, you know, really work in the long offseason they have to, if they want to be a competitor in the CAA next year. Yes, you are certainly right, Donna. Not a great season. But now, a big reason things didn't turn out the way fans had hoped is because of the injuries. The defense lost its leader and linebacker Michael DeCaster in the first game at Buffalo. But from that point on, redshirt freshman Julian Cox stepped in and didn't look back. He was outstanding all season, leading the team with 94 tackles. For his efforts, he was named the co-defensive rookie of the year in the CAA. Offensive lineman Kevin Loy and pass rusher Samuel Gray also made the all-conference third team. But that is about all the hardware the team would get after a disappointing season. But just like our friend Zach Horwitz said a few weeks ago, with all the injuries, with the freshmen, it was it was a hard adjustment this year they had right. to make. And with Coach Ford and Coach Gattuso, those guys, there's still some layover between those players. So really hard to find some consistency. Right. There. I mean, it's going to be a few years before we really see a consistent, consistent team here. 
But, I mean, you also have to consider the quarterback situation with Nevin Sussman, DJ Crook, and Will Brunson. I mean, they're all after the job still. It was really never settled the whole season. I mean, between Crook being, you know, inconsistent and then Sussman coming in, he did a good job as a freshman, but he was in and out with injuries towards the end of the year. Crook did step up, however, when he needed to be in the games when, uh, when Sussman came out with injuries, but... You know, the position's still up for grabs, so we'll have to see next year, you know, who works the hardest in the offseason. All right, well, we'll be right back to talk about basketball. Stay with us here on UAlbany Overtime. Albany overtime. Now basketball is underway and they've gotten off to an impressive start. The men's team opened up in Lexington where they took on the now number one Wildcats. The Danes battled hard but would go on to lose 78-65. Troy, what were some of your takeaways from that game? Well Donna, they really did not play that badly. I mean John Calipari's team bringing a lot of freshmen every year. They're known for just being a powerhouse every year producing these one and done. These, you know, they're a great recruiting school what Calipari's been able to do over the past few years. But you only going against the guys, Sky LeBissier. Isaiah Briscoe did not play for them, but Jamal Murray as well. I mean, this team has a lot of really good players that, you know, would never step foot on you only. But you only only losing by 13. They didn't even play their best game. They missed a lot of threes. I believe 13 three pointers they missed. Did not shoot well from the free throw line. So you only didn't play their best game. But still, to only lose by 13 to the number one team in the country, that's pretty impressive. And, a, you know, a very good test for you all early Absolutely. in the season that can prepare them down the road. Definitely. And after another tough road loss, however, to Boston University, the Danes got their first win of the season at home against Colgate. Ray Sanders had a big game, scoring a career-high 24 points. We were unable to get video of the previous games, but you all be overtime's own Nick Rinaldi was at the game versus Oneonta. So, Troy, let's take a look at some of those highlights. Yes, yeah, certainly. Shout out to Nick. Now, here we got you all hosting Division Three Oneonta a few week weekends ago. And, Donna, it was the you all big men doing all the work. See Peter Hooley on the dribble drive, the nifty spin and pass to Mike Rowley, who goes baseline reverse. He led all scores with 13. Another big man, Greg Steyer, spins off his man and gets the lay-in to go. Freshman Jameer Andrews off the screen, dribbles left, puts the fadeaway up off the glass. Offense having a field day. And of course, it's not a you only highlight without Peter Rooley. Take a look at the scoop shot here. And to cap it all off, the big fella, Richard Peters, backs now his opponent, puts in it for two. You only would win by 43 points. Now, a little more recently, the Danes played three games in five days. In the first, you only lost to South Florida by two before going home to beat NGIT in a close one in Yale in a blowout. A few days ago, Will Brown's team took to Hamden in search of its first road win versus Quinnipiac, and they got it, beating the Bobcats by four points. You only will stay on the road for its next two games before making the crosstown trip to the Times Union Center to play Siena in the annual Albany Cup. We will certainly have more for you next episode about that highly anticipated game. Now, looking at the women's, remember, they were picked to win the American East Conference after winning it all last year and barely losing to Duke in the NCAA tournament. Coach Abe's team returned stars Sharisa Richards and Imani Tate, as well as other key players. They've had a packed schedule so far. How are they looking, Donna? Well, Troy, the women are off to an incredible start as they are looking great in all aspects of the game. Uh, they took wins in their first two games against Pepperdine and Boston University, and they continue to be dominant the next weekend in the tip-off tournament at the University of Rhode Island. The team beat Toledo by eight in the first round on Saturday, and then went on to take the title against URI on Sunday by a score of 67-58. And now this past week, the Danes flew down to Tennessee to take on the Lady Balls and show that they could definitely compete with the now eight-ranked powerhouse. With a full house watching, Sharisha Whit Richards and Imani Tate led the way. Richard earned a double-double and Tate added 15, and the team would fall 63-55 to Lady Vols. 
But playing a game like that against such a strong team can only help them before they start conference play. Oh, yeah, you're certainly right. I mean, just like the men for Kentucky, girls, Tennessee, you all many, you know, they're playing some marquee teams right here. Very Absolutely. impressive. And now let's take a look at some Providence highlights. The now 5-1 and one UAlbany team. Here's Imani Tate and the Danes taking on the Friars. Now Leah Miller with the pass to Evie Scola who lays it in. Providence trailing early. Now Aaron Coughlin delivers the pass to Sharisha Richards who powers her way to get the foul and one. Now Providence is Erica Mayer scrambles for the ball off the glass and one. And now the Danes lead by eight at the half. Now in the fourth quarter, things got a little interesting. Turnover by UAlbany, Maddie Joling gets it to Sarah Beal, who has played an outstanding game, finds Miller for two, Providence down eight with just over five minutes. And here's Beal again, crosses up, passes to Miller, give and go and Beal with the bucket. And that would cut the lead to seven. But when times get tough, you look to your playmakers. And here's Imani Tate, drives left and one to seal the victory. UAlbany wins by 13. So last week, Imani Tate was awarded America East Player of the Week. Tate has been off to a monster start this year, averaging 22.3 points per game at the time of the award. She was also named MVP for the URI tip-off tournament, so we'll definitely continue to see big things out of her as the season continues. Yes, a fantastic player for this team. Imani Tate is love watching her play. Absolutely. Stay with us, guys, and we will be right back. back to you Albany Overtime. Now here we are, it's December, and we still can't get enough of our great Danes field hockey team. Yes, Donna. This fall, we love to speak about the field hockey team, and before the break, I got the chance to sit down with Paula Hoiza to talk a little about herself and her journey to Albany. Here are some excerpts from you Albany Overtime's first ever exclusive interview. So when you're playing in Germany, what was it that made you want to come play here in America? Um... I just, I didn't really know, so at Germany, in Germany when you have, when you're done with high school, you have to decide right away what you want to major in, so I, I wasn't that far, like I didn't really know yeah, what I wanted to major in, so, tough. yeah, so we really wanted to take a gap year, and it was like, oh, I could do work and travel, like some friends go to Australia or New Zealand and do work and travel, or like, I don't know, try to figure out what they want to do, mm -hmm. so a lot of people take a gap year, and I thought, okay, come to, go to the United States, I could really like play hockey for a year, which would be great, and then trying to figure out what I want to study in. So first it was just a gap year, but then I really liked it, so I like, decided to stay for four years. But basically just this chance of take, like trying to figure out what I want to do and playing hockey on a really high level. Yeah, like, like, I like that, yeah. Like so that. did Coach Sykes recruit you out of Germany or you got to the US first and then um, he recruited you? I just, no, I just emailed, like wrote a bunch of emails to coaches. I just got this, um, link from a friend from home, she's like, oh yeah, just, just email some coaches, so it was like, okay, Omni sounds good, and it was like, um, like, there were some schools I didn't email for, because I couldn't find that email address right away, like, it was so random that I emailed Omni. So, <laughs> so you're one of the best players in the country, and you weren't recruited, you were getting yourself out there? Yeah, I mean, they, yeah. <laughs> That's the start. I didn't know it before. So, now, once you emailed Coach Sykes, what was his reaction? Um, I actually emailed him, <laughs> because this was also random, I emailed him, we were skiing on holiday in Austria, like during winter break, it was like after Christmas the day, and we couldn't go out for skiing, <laughs> because the weather was so bad, so I just like wrote him, oh, should I just email some colleges, <laughs> so, and then he, and he moved back the same day, which was so weird, because it was Christmas, or I don't, yeah. I don't remember, and then he was like, yeah, it'd be really interesting, do you have a video, and I didn't have a video of me playing. So like, then we went back to Germany and I had to make a video when it was so cold out and I hadn't played <laughs> after hockey for so long and I did this video and sent it to him and then in the meantime some other schools replied. So I sent it to him and he was really impressed and really wanted me so he kept, like, we kept in touch and then there were some other schools I was talking to but yeah, 
I, I actually had a phone call with him, with Good, which was so hard and like I was so nervous. Wow. But, um, yeah, it all came up. What were some of those other schools that were looking at you? Uh, actually, UNC. Ooh. Uh, it was like my. It was between Albany and UNC. Uh, how quickly of a transition did you have to make, or how long did it take for you to, you know, get acclimated to American school? Yeah, it definitely. Hockey? To really get acclimated, probably took me a whole semester or even more, because it's it was all like just all people. It was different. Like if it was different, and then playing hockey was different. The language, obviously, and then just like the whole thing off. Me, like talked like I don't know everything so um, and then I think after I went home for Christmas break once really helped me like figuring everything out and like reflecting on it and like that's when I really yeah. like I had so much fun playing hockey here and it was so much I don't know I really we lost the final against UNH my freshman year and that was I mean it sounds stupid that that was one reason but actually it was because I wanted to fight back and I oh I believe to, it yeah and I was like I can't leave here without not having won anything, <laughs> so I was ready to fight back, yeah. So, let's fast forward a bit, up until now, how would you say your student-athlete experience at UOMI has been so far? It's amazing how much happened in like two, two and a half years. Mm -hmm. You've had an incredible career here so mm -hmm. far, a lot of success, records broken. When you first got on its camps, did you ever think that that would be <laughs> no. a possibility? No, I had no idea that there were awards like that. At <laughs> home, seriously, at home we don't take statistics. Like, okay, if you score goals, people kind of know that you score goals, but I didn't really score goals at home because my position was different at home. And um, I, I think I remember I got rookie of the week the first time. I didn't even know what the word rookie means. <laughs> um, so you've got a lot of you know national recognition yeah. and whatnot. And in, in Dutch quad, in Dutch dining hall, you put, I don't know if you ever go there, but oh, your, your yeah, poster is there. I mean, like, how, how cool is that? Do you ever listen to all the hype about you? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, sometimes I don't win it. Like, especially in the student athlete um, community, people know me, and they just, like, randomly high-five me on campus. <laughs> now, I've seen you out on the field. You're a real competitor. Like, you get mad. I can see you <laughs> flying angry when something doesn't yeah. go your way. What is, how would you characterize your mindset out there when you're playing? Uh, I'm actually, yeah, people have said that before that I'm really intense during the game. I, yeah, I don't, I really get into it, I guess. There's nothing wrong with that, yeah, that's perfect. I <laughs> um, yeah, I get mad sometimes. <laughs> it's just, I like, I'm actually like, during, like, during the game, I'm actually a nice person, I think, to my opponents, but as soon as they push me or do something really unnecessary, I get really frustrated and mad, and then, like, I just, that's probably the best what could happen for me that when I get mad because then I'm like actually really into it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alright, so you've got one more he one more year yeah. here. What are your goals for next year, Paolo? Um <laughs> Yeah, I definitely wanna I know you're thinking about yeah. it already, I'm sure. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I definitely like okay this season and uh, like we won America East which was great, but like the loss in the first one was definitely not what we wanted and I still keep thinking about it and I really wanna fight back and like be able to to get further next year. What what happened in that game? Why didn't you guys go um, I don't know, we overslept the first 10 minutes, I guess, and then we, I don't know, we had really good chance, in the, especially in the second half, and um, it just didn't want to be, wasn't supposed to be, I guess. Um, so after next year, you're going to graduate. Yeah. What are your plans after that, do you know? Uh, okay, so my, my first plan is to go back to Germany and do my master there, and then the good, like what I really like about home, I can continue to play hockey. So um, yeah, that's my first plan. And maybe I'll find a job here, but I, I don't know yet. Um, so you said so you can continue playing there. I mean, what kind of, like, just more club field hockey or more like national team, that kind of thing? Um, no, I don't think that I'm gonna make the national team, but even just playing first division there would be so, like, I would love to do it. Like, it's really high level. It's like, probably the best teams there, as I said, are probably better than the best teams here. So it would be on, really, on a really high level. And um, yeah, I, I would love to do that. Do you get paid for that or not? Um, not a lot. Um, you maybe get like, 
sponsorships, so you might might be able to get a car or like little things, and you get supported a little bit, but you can't dick. No, I, I have to get a job. She had a lot of cool stuff to say. I mean, she had to email her coaches when she was in the recruiting process. This is one of the best players in the country, and she had to get herself out there. Just incredible. A great story. Great story. Now stick around, and we'll be right back with some closing remarks. You're watching U Albany Overtime. Welcome back. Now, before we wrap up, let's take a quick look at what some past you all in the athletes are up to. Former lacrosse player Ty Thompson has officially signed a contract to play for the Rochester Nighthawks in the National Lacrosse League. He will play for them in the upcoming 2016 season. And ever since his London debut with the Kansas City Chiefs, tight end Brian Parker has been playing minutes for a team that is making a serious playoff push. He even caught a six-yard pass in a Week 10 win versus the Broncos. That's really, that's awesome. Now, as we finish up the fall semester, we'll start looking towards the spring sports. We'll start preseason when we get back in January. We'll have more for you on their preparation next episode. Hey, Donna, aren't, aren't you one of those? Are, are you going to be speaking here for <laughs> us? I can maybe give us a little insight. I don't know. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, but for now, this has been you Albany Overtime. I'm Donna Conrad. And I'm Troy Farkas. Saying good night and go Danes.